Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to 10 plants with unstable variegation. Variegated plants are a thing, not among every single plant collector, but generally it's kind of a thing that people want. And some plants are just easier for this than others. It has to be said. Now I haven't picked the worst offenders of the bunch necessarily. Sometimes I have, sometimes I haven't. I've more gone for things that appear to be kind of hot right now because I think that's maybe more useful. I feel like it's more relevant to everybody. This video is based mainly on my experience. If anyone doesn't know, I own a plant shop and I must have about four and a half thousand plants in here as we speak. Obviously not in here but in the main part of the shop. I deal with a lot of plants on the daily in large volumes. I may have about a hundred of one plant sat at a given point so I'm not just only one or two of these plants. I have a lot. That is really good and I feel like it's helpful for you guys because it means I can give you information on my experience looking after them, things that I find, whether they ship, etc. So without further ado, I'm just going to get started. So the first plant on my list is something, honestly, this just, oh my god, this just annoys me so much. But the first plant on my list that I think is notoriously unstable, as it happens, is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. Now, I have had not great results with these plants. The most recent batch I got in later last year, I think late summer, they've done a lot better. But generally speaking, every single time I've had a philodendron Florida Beauty, they have reverted. Or, or, they haven't reverted, but what tends to happen is we all like to buy our cuttings with like a half moon leaf, right? If you don't know what that means, I mean basically half the leaf is variegated, half the leaf is not. We all love it. That's just a thing that we all strive for. Not all of us, but a lot of us. Every single time I buy one of these things, I get them in and the half and half, if something goes wrong or it starts to grow slightly differently, what you will end up with is an all yellow leaf and an all green leaf and an all yellow leaf and an all green leaf. And I had a cutting of a Florida Beauty so long ago now. This is like one of the first variegated plants I got. It was so long ago. And that happened to me and it would not stop happening. I still have, by the way, if anyone remembers my first ever Florida Beauty, I still have the plant. It's out there. I think it's chilling out next to my UPI actually. And it's still happening. I still keep cutting it. It still keeps doing it. It gives me a yellow leaf, then it gives me a green leaf. So I find them to be generally very temperamental. I do have several others sat in the shop. I think I may have maybe about 20 at the moment and they, they, they're behaving a lot better, don't get me wrong, but they can just revert super fast. Even though the previous leaf and the node has good variegation in, I just find that there is something about the way these things grow that just don't like to be variegated or they just don't play ball. So for that reason, I'm putting it on this list at number one. The next plant on my list is more of a general category here, and I'm talking about variegated alocasia. Now then, I have had countless, and I mean countless experiences, buying different types of variegated alocasia, you name it. Variegated Sabrina, variegated dragon scale, variegated, uh, is it, is it Macariza? Uh, what else have I had? Variegated fry deck, variegated Amazonica. I have had a ton of different variegated allocations and let me tell you, they are so unstable for me generally. I don't know if anyone else has found that, but I find that a lot. I bought, and notably so, I've talked about this in previous videos recently, I bought a wonderful Alocasia Dragon Scale Variegata a little while ago and honestly this thing was so stunning, but it reverted and then I went and got a variegated Amazonica, which if you haven't seen it, I feature it in my Rare Plant Shop documentary on my channel. That was in there. That revert as well. What I've come to believe is, and what I've come to gather from my experience, every time you get something variegated that is an alocasia, it might start small and then it will reach a maximum point and then it just disappears. So a lot of the time, and I've worked out how people have been able to do this, and I think other people know this as well, because every time I've bought a variegated alocasia, the most recent leaf is the one with the most variegation on it. And every time I've done that, the next leaf has been not variegated. And I'm not blaming any of the sellers here because, I mean, that is the best time to sell the plant. If, you, if you're in the know and you know that thing might revert, sell it. That's on you. Do you know what I mean? But I bought them and they reverted. And it's almost like when you see a leaf that's got great variegation, run. It's not coming back. And I'm not saying it happens with every single plant. I'm saying it's happened with every one I've owned. There is a way to bring it back. It's not a very nice way. No one's going to like me mentioning, but there is a way. It's not sure fire. It's probably just, I would say, likely to bring it back. But yeah, I wanted to mention them as a general bracket. 
I would love to know if you've got experience with this or if for you they're quite stable. Perhaps there's a certain type of allocation that's just more stable than the others. Personally, I don't think there is. I'm not saying I've looked after every single allocation in the world, but I think I've got enough different types there under my belt to know that it's a consistent problem with allocation. So if you're looking for a variegated allocation, be very careful. So the next plant on my list is not that bad. And again, I want to mention it because it's hot right now. So I, I kind of want to deliver my experience on it because I feel like it's quite relevant. And the next plant on my list for being unstable is the Syngonium albo variegata. So the white variegated Syngonium. This is honestly the kindest in terms of reversion. Normally, if this thing's going to revert, it happens very slowly and you can really see it coming. It's not like variegated alocasia where it's like blink and now it's green. It's nothing like that. You can control it pretty well and you're going to control it pretty well because it's so easy to propagate and cut from and you won't really get failed propagations or at least i don't compared to other plants they're really easy for me so for that reason i want to mention it because it's not stable but it's not that bad and it's honestly nothing you can't live with so for that reason i want to talk about it today i do still recommend them as i said they are easy to propagate they can tolerate underwatering they can tolerate overwatering, they generally look pretty hot and they're pretty affordable for a variegated plant. In my opinion, they're, they're definitely in the lower, um, some, sometimes high two digits, low three digits, but generally you can get them and they're quite attainable and they're easy to look after and they won't really let you down. I recommend them, but they're not stable and I want you to know they're not stable. But honestly, it's not something that you can't see coming and it's not something you can't prevent. Another plant that is super popular right now in at number four that I had to mention, I don't think anyone doesn't know this, but I thought I'd mention this just to be on the safe side. The next plant on my list is the Monstera albo variegata or the variegated Monstera. This is not stable. I wanted to mainly mention this one because in my stable plants video, I mentioned the Monstera Thai constellation, which is stable. A lot of people, when they go to pick Monstera, they'll either pick the Thai or the Albo or they'll pick both. When you're trying to buy a cutting of these things, because that's generally how people are buying them these days, go for a cutting where, you know, that you see a lot of variegation. Over 50% is not a good idea. You want to go somewhere between 30 and 50%, I would say, just to be on the safe side and make sure you get your cutting with a node. If you want to know what I'm talking about, about. I have a whole video on that that I will link down below. It covers everything to do with variegated monstera, but I really wanted everyone to know that it is unstable and things can still revert. Even if you start with a great cutting of nearly anything, things can revert. It's what happens. It's just the perils of doing this. So given that these plants are so sought after, I did want to re-mention them. So sorry if I sound like a broken record, but I felt like it needed to be said as a kind of companion to the Thai constellation mentioned in the previous video. Next on the list is very much a similar thing. The next on the list is the Monstera aurea. So what I'm saying there is, I'm talking about the yellow variegated Monstera. This Monstera isn't as common as the other one. What I mean by that is people just tend not to collect it. I think a lot of people just prefer white variegation to yellow. A lot of people associate yellow variegation with the plant being quite sick or unwell. I don't personally, I think it's quite nice. I think it's nice to have white variegated things and yellow variegated things in a collection to give it a bit more variety and a bit more color, each to their own. But I want to mention it because it's really no different from the variegated monster. If anything, I find it slightly more unstable. It's probably the same, and that's probably down to my experience. In my situation, I find it a little bit more unstable. It probably won't be. I can't see why it would be any different. So really, it's the same as the other plant on this list, the variegated monster. But again, just to be on the safe side, to help any new rare plant purchases, that may not keep its variegation. You might have to do stuff to keep it. One thing I absolutely must mention about this plant though is not to cut it too early because the way the variegation comes in on a yellow variegate Monstera, it starts off quite green and that could be literally just a lime green coming in. So you might not think that the, you know, the cutting is variegate, but it might be. So you need to give it time for that leaf to harden off so you can properly see it. Believe me, I've cut things and they've been variegated. Luckily, I didn't throw it out. I'm kind of annoyed that I cut it because I didn't need to because there was actually a lot of variegation on the leaf. Just watch out for that. It can happen to anybody. Nothing bad happens, of course. So you just end up with two plants, but certainly don't cut things and throw them away because there might be variegation there that just hasn't quite developed yet. Next plant on my list, I find incredibly unstable and it's even worse because it's so hard to propagate and that is the Spathophyllum variegated. Now I think I'm talking about the domino specifically, I think that's what it's called. I have one, I'm staring at it now off camera. I bought that early last year, I think. I actually picked it out myself when I was in Thailand and it wasn't a very variegated one then, but it's just always struggled with variegation. So you could argue the genetics weren't really there when I bought it. 
but the problem is you can't cut it back if it reverts. What I'm having to do with mine, and if I keep looking off camera, I'm looking at the plant, I've had to basically wait for it to pop itself and produce babies, which it's starting to off the bottom around the base. They don't look super variegated, but they are variegated. So we'll see what happens with that. But I wanted to mention it because I think variegated peace lilies are very, very pretty. Obviously the green ones are beautiful, but a lot of people, if you can have something variegated, then why not? So in that sense, I like them. I am specifically talking about the domino and not the, I can't remember what it's called. Not domino. It's not Domino at all, it's Picasso. So I'm specifically talking about the Picasso here. The Domino is different and I don't know if it has the same issues. It appears that it doesn't because the variegation displays very differently. It's not necessarily sectoral, it's like splayed throughout. That might be more stable on this one, but because this one is sectoral chunks, it's honestly hit and miss. So if you want a variegated piece lily, saying this now without knowledge of the other species, from eyeballing it, it looks like it's gonna be more stable than the one I have. So maybe less Picasso, although I think they look better when they're a good specimen, maybe go for the Domino. That was really confusing me because there's two different names and I couldn't remember which one it was. Coming in at number eight, and this is a good one and people probably aren't gonna be surprised to hear about it, but the next plant on my list for being notoriously unstable as hell is the Philodendron Pink Princess. People probably know by now, I, I tend to bash this plant quite a lot, to be honest. I think it's overhyped, I don't think it grows well, and I also wanna share with you how unstable it is. Now, this is a really gray area I find when talking about pink princesses because I hear a range of things. Now I've cut these plants at different points and I've discovered different things. So I've cut a plant both that was producing a little bit of variegation and I've cut a plant that was producing a ton like it was all pink and there's a picture on my Instagram of that. So the picture of the pink princess being just totally pink that kept dying, which tells me that the, obviously the color that comes from the leaves is in the node, which is what you would expect from a variegated plant. I know this sounds a bit wild, but stay with me. A lot of the plants, and I think I might have about 20 again downstairs that I have in my collection that are pink, they're so sporadic, you can't predict it. And a lot of the time people do say this, when you cut a pink princess, it supposedly suppresses the variegation. It's gonna take a little while to come back. And there are many, many cases, I promise you I'm not making this up, of people that have got supposedly reverted pink princesses and they've started firing out a ton of pink, which is weird to me. Cause it's like, is it in the node? Is it not in the node? What does it really depend on? It's really quite an interesting subject. Whatever the conditions for this are, it can definitely be said how unstable they are. You really can't predict it. If anyone remembers, I still have my mother plant from the International Aroid Show that I got like, I think it's like two years ago now. I've had to cut that down because it turned all pink. It hasn't really grown back very quickly actually, but I don't anticipate that's gonna be highly variegated. It doesn't seem to work in the way that you would expect it to. Let me know down below if you've got a certain experience with Pink Princess. It's just a bit of a weird one because I've experienced both ends of the spectrum because this pink can literally sporadically come back out of nowhere. Be that as it may, it's still unstable as hell because the results can really vary. And honestly, I've mentioned this before, to get a pink princess with good variegation is hard to do. It's really hard to do in today's climate. So I'm just gonna bash them one last time and say they're unstable on top of everything else. Oh God, you know, I bashed this plant recently as well. So the next plant on my list that I find extremely, extremely unstable is the Billetier variegata, which if you don't know what I'm saying, I'm saying variegated billetai. That's actually how you pronounce it. You pronounce it Billetier. My experiences with this plant are limitless. Honestly, I bought so many in for the shop. They just revert. I'm not saying every plant reverts. I'm not saying don't buy one, it's definitely gonna revert or anything like that. But every one I've bought in, and I've been very vocal about this, they just do not hold the variegation. And again, this comes down to buying a leaf with a half moon shape. I am noticing this. It would seem that when they start growing from that, which however they cut when they're, they're you know, cut in nurseries to sell, it would seem that after that, I get a yellow leaf, a green leaf, a yellow leaf, a green leaf, and it's just impossible to control. So I guess my advice, if you want to buy a variegated billetai, maybe don't go for a half moon one. And I guess you could you could attribute this to Monstera, you could attribute this to anything, because this honestly does matter. It really does. Don't get a half moon. 
go for something that is a lot more, you know, like on either side of the leaf blade when you look at it. Don't just go for half moon. You can if you want, but I honestly deem it to be nowhere near as stable as, you know, a different type of display of variegation, would you say? Because there's one that I used to have a couple of years ago and it was beautiful. I think it might have had a half and half leaf or it was somewhere near close to that. But as a result, it really held the variegation. Every other billet I have brought in doesn't. Am I saying they're all half moons? No, but generally that's what gets sold. That's what gets offered. So maybe, maybe consider not going for a half moon, especially on a billet time, because honestly, I am sick to death of getting a yellow leaf, a green leaf, a yellow leaf, a green leaf. It doesn't look attractive. It's not very nice. It's not what you want. So for that reason, they literally, they have to be on this list. Last on the list, I could literally not include a list on unstable variegation without including this plant. This list is not in any order, by the way, but this plant is, it has to be number one. It just, it has to be. There is no other plant on this earth that is as unstable as this one, and that's because it's fake. So the next plant and the last plant on my list today is the Philodendron Pink Congo. Now I'm gonna assume that most of you know about this plant by now. This was a huge thing that hit the internet. I think it was a year ago, two years ago now. It was a while ago and it hit big. And I did a video on this. I will link it down below if you're interested. It covers pretty much everything you'd need to know. But long story short, the pink in this pink plant is not real and it will wear off. It has been treated with a chemical to induce essentially pink variegation to mimic that of a pink princess because that's what was in fashion, that's what everyone wanted, and it will only last six to 12 months. I have proven this on my channel for anyone that says that it's not a thing. It is a thing. Don't be told otherwise. I promise you those people are wrong. This thing reverts. The plant will produce all pink leaves and it will look great. And after a period of time, even the leaves with the pink on, this is how you know it's funky, even the leaves with the pink on will slowly start bleeding into green. Like it's not natural the way it reverts. So normally when you have a variegated plant and it reverts, it's just going to push out leaves with less variegation on or it'll just push out an all green leaf and there you go. That's not what happens with these. Trust me, it's gross. What happens is the green literally bleeds in and it looks wrong. It looks like it's painted. It looks fake. So if you want to buy one of these, I, I don't often say this on my channel, don't buy them. Honestly, don't buy them. You're wasting your money. Only buy them if they're dirt cheap, like $20, $30, and you know it's going to wear off and it's a temporary thing. Do not buy this plant thinking it is rare. It's variegated. You can make money off it. It's not for you. Just trust me on that. Honestly, I don't normally like really pushing an opinion out there, but when it comes to this plant, I feel like I have to because I feel like it's a public service announcement, to be honest with you. In terms of this chemical, I'm going to cover it now because I think it is, uh, it's relevant. I have seen this chemical pop up again recently. It's not worth me doing a full video on it. I know you guys tag me in a lot of stuff. I do see it. But I'm not going to do a video on it yet, but I want you guys to know it happens in other plants and it will be obvious. It really will. If a plant is producing normal colored leaves and all of a sudden it's all pink, I'm telling you now, unless it's sun stress, it's chemical. 99% of cases, that's going to be chemical. Just saying it now, I've seen things like this crop up, uh, particularly on Facebook and Instagram, and I've seen people buy into them and it worries me. So I'm just re-pushing it out there again. There are some plants that I've seen, and I know you guys have seen them too, that are not real. If you want to play with chemically induced plants, that's your bag. Do it on the cheap. Don't sell it as something else and everything else. I'm not going to rant about it because I've already done it before, about twice on this channel. So if you want to watch my video on the Pink Congo, please go ahead. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's really quite an interesting watch. I will leave any of the videos I've mentioned today during our chat in my description. So if you'd like to go and have a look at them, feel free. And that is it for this week's video. This one was a little bit more quick fire, but I felt that it needed to be because the last one was so long. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any plants that you think are just notoriously horrendous for variegation, then please leave them in the comments below. Let me know what your experiences are. Until next time, that's it for this video, guys. I will see you next week.